was 15 years old, I heard one of my brother's friends playing some really mean blues lead licks on his guitar. How do you do that? I asked him. In answer, he took hold of an old cigarette packet and opened it out and with a ballpoint pen he scrawled out five grid patterns with little circles on and just handed it to me. Learn those, was all he said. At the time I felt like I'd just been initiated into the secret inner circle of lead guitar players. And now, nearly 40 years on, I reckon that feeling was just about right. Because since that point in time, I have to say the whole subject of lead guitar opened up for me and to all intents and purposes, I never looked back. And since then I've made it part of my life's mission to pass on that sense of initiation. But you're lucky, look, I've even written out the diagrams neatly for you. Let's go through them one at a time. We're learning a system that will enable us to play in any key, but for the sake of keeping things simple to start with, we're going to learn each of these five positions in the key of E. Later we'll talk about how we change to other keys. Now here's the first position in E. Um, first of all, I'll show you using the open strings. To play this position here, we line our fingers up one, two, three, like that first finger with the first fret, second finger, second fret, third finger with the third fret. Then starting with the sixth string, we play open, three, next string, open, one, two, next string, open, two, next string, open, two, three, open, three, next string, open, three, and then come back down, open, three on the next string, open, next string, three, two, open, next string, two, open, next string, two, one, position can also be played up here at the 12th fret. That's because these notes are a repeat, an octave higher, of all the open strings. E, A, D, G, B, E. So in this position we use all four fingers, because we haven't got the use of the open strings, and we finger one, four. Next string, one, two, three. Next string, one, three. Next string, one, three, four. Next string, one, four. Next string, one, four. Coming back, one. Next string, down, four, one. Next string, four, three, one. Next string three, one. Next string three, two, one. Next string four, one. So that's overlaps the first, so it starts here. Now the important thing with this position, to, in order to maintain our one finger per fret rule, which is essential for efficient fingering discipline, um, 
start with your second finger on this first note of the position. Now this note is at fret 3 on the 6th string. So second finger, 3rd fret, bottom string. We then finger 2, and these are finger numbers, remember not fret numbers. We finger 2, 4. Next string, 1, 4. Next string, 1, 4. Next string, 1, 2, 3. Next string, 2, 4. Next string, 2, 4. Coming down, 2. Next string, 4, 2. Next string, 3, 2, 1. Next string, 4, 1. Next string, 4, 1. Next string, 4, 2. So that's the third position is a little bit trickier. This is one position where uh, a lot of people are very tempted to compromise the, the fingering. Um, and it's important to say that when you're drilling scales, you finger them in one particular way according to a certain discipline. When you're actually playing with the scales, it's absolutely fine, I think, to compromise that fingering in the interests of sort of artistic versatility, if you like. But it is important to have a kind of base pattern that you can always get back to, one that's absolutely conditioned into, into you by, by hours of drilling. So I'm going to strongly suggest that again we start this pattern on the second finger, reserving this finger uh, for the note that appears on a, the third string. So with your hand lined up like this, with your second finger at fret 5 on the sixth string, we start by going fingers 2, 3, Four. Next string two, four. Next string two, four. Next string one, four. Then at this point we move our whole hand up one position. So we're now playing fret five on the B string with our first finger. We play one, four. Moving on, one, two, three. Coming back, two, one, next string, four, one. Then again, the shift down a position, four, one, four, two, four, two, four, three, two. So that's the temptation to play it like this is only wrong because that means we want to pull out there and stretch that finger to reach that note there. Always harder, especially at high speed, to play smoothly when you have to stretch your hand than it is to play smoothly when you have to shrink your hand in to accommodate these, these changes. So that's the rationale behind what at first seems like a slightly awkward fingering um, and that fingering will help you strengthen your little finger which is always a good thing anyway. So in the fourth position, we're back to using our first finger to kick off on, and we're at fret seven on the sixth string. Now for some odd reason, um, this position, although physically a bit easier, um, also proves uh, a bit tricky for most people to learn. 
um, so follow it carefully. So again, starting with our first finger at fret 7, we're going 1, 4, next string 1, 4, next string 1, 2, 3, next string 1, 3, next string 2, 4, next string 1, 4, coming down 1, next string 4, 2, next string 3, 1, next string 3, 2, 1, next string 4, 1, next string 4, 1. So worth noting that the fingering 1, 4 or 4, 1 applies to three of the strings. In the middle we've got a little block that goes 1, 2, 3, 1, 3 and then a slightly awkward 2, 4. That's a bit that often catches people out. So putting all that together we've got We're going back onto our second finger because we're reserving our first finger for these notes here. So second finger, 10th fret on the 6th string. This position, as long as we keep our finger discipline, this is relatively straightforward. It's almost um, symmetrical, this pattern. Um, so fret 10, second finger on the 6th string. We start by going 2-4, next string 2-4, next string 1-4, next string 1-4, next string 2-3-4, next string 2-4. Coming down, 2, down a string 4-3-2, down a string 4 1, down a string 4 1, down a string 4 2, down a string 4 2. So that's us back that position to the note E here at the 12th fret um, so that links us back to the first position and we're reminded here on the diagram you can see it says either open or 12th fret um, so as demonstrated earlier it's the same pattern as played at the open frets but we have to finger all these notes at fret 12 Carry on moving up, second position again. Third position, and so on. Until you fall off the end of the guitar. But in terms of drilling, it's fine just to go through each of the five positions. Um, that's the important thing. So, those are the five positions of the blues scale in E. Make sure you learn those really thoroughly, really commit them to memory, and then start using them as a warm-up exercise. That'll look something like this. Many 
times as you like. The more automatic you get it, the better. The better you know these patterns, the more free you are to express yourself when you're playing because you just won't have to think about where these notes are. If you want to develop at the fastest possible rate as a lead guitarist, I really strongly recommend getting over to the Guitar Gym section of the site and checking out the drill on pentatonic scale patterns. Pentatonic scales are only one note different from the blues scale pattern we've just looked at, so you'll soon be able to figure out how to use the same principle to drill these scales. Okay, well, I hope you have some fun with that, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson where we'll look at how to use these same patterns in all sorts of different keys.